Today I'm going to talk to you about Chebyshev's inequality. Chebyshev's inequality gives us limits on how likely or unlikely it is for a random value selected from a population to be a certain distance from the mean. We're going to measure that distance as a multiple of the standard deviation. Now recall that the standard deviation tells us how far on average numbers are from the mean. Okay, so two standard deviations would make a number twice as far off center as the values typically are in that population. So here's Chebyshev's inequality. For a given multiple k of sigma, so again, that's k standard deviations, that's how many standard deviations we're interested in, we're going to have x be a random value taken from any population. That population could be continuous, discrete, Okay, symmetric, bimodal, skewed left, skewed right, uniform, does not matter. Chebyshev's inequality always applies in any situation. Okay. So for a given random value okay, and a multiple of sigma, the following statement is true. And so here's your probability statement. A lot of symbols. Uh, don't worry about that. We're going to walk through those symbols. So... Let's start from left to right. We have our capital P with the parentheses, which always represents the probability that whatever is written inside the parentheses happens. Okay, so let's look inside the parentheses now. We're looking at the probability that the distance between a value and the mean, right? So X minus mu is the distance between X and mu but that could be positive or negative depending on if x is above the average mu or below the average mu. Okay, so when you take the absolute value, then we're stuck with just the distance between x and mu. So this is very similar to uh, the calculation for the standard deviation. When we take the value minus the mean and see how far off center they are. Okay. Now, we're looking at the probably the distance between the value and the mean is less than the predetermined k standard deviations. So again, we set k okay, away from the mean. Um, so Chebyshev's is giving this the probability that the distance between a random number and the mean is less than this distance is at least one minus one over k squared. Okay, so that's the greater than or equal to is at least so the probability of being a certain number of standard deviations off center okay, is going to be directly related to the number of standard deviations we're talking about. So again, putting all this together, the way we read these symbols is the probability that a value is less than k standard deviations from the mean is at least 1 minus 1 over k squared. Now let's visualize this. So here I've drawn the mean in the center of our graph, because remember the mean is telling us where the middle of the population is. Okay, we're looking at the distance from the mean to our endpoints being k times sigma. Right? That's our fixed number of standard deviations. So if we add or subtract that distance k sigma, we'll have a lower limit of the mean minus k sigma and an upper limit of the mean plus k sigma. And what Chebyshev's is saying is, is the probability that a value ends up in this middle section, which would make it less than k sigma or k standard deviations away from the mean, is going to be at least one minus one over k squared, could be higher, very likely will be higher, because Chebyshev's applies in any situation, some situations, the probabilities increase dramatically. Okay. And now remember, the total probability of being somewhere has to be 1. So if 1 minus 1 over k squared is probably being in the middle, if we subtract that from 1, we get the probability of being in the outside, which means that the probability of being more than k standard deviations away from the mean is going to be at most 1 over k squared. So again, put these two together. The probability of being less than or within k standard deviations of the mean is going to be at least this number 1 minus 1 over k squared. 
and the probability that you're going to be more than k standard deviations or outside the range of k standard deviations is going to be at most never higher than 1 over k squared. Okay, so now let's look at a numerical example uh, to help sort this out. So for our first example, we're going to let mu be 148 and sigma be 7. So the mean is 148, the standard deviation is 7. So I'm going to visualize this. I have my mean, my center point of the population is at 148. Okay. I'm going to let k be 2. Again, I'm choosing that. So Chebyshev says for a given value of k, then something is true. So I'm giving you a value of 2. And so we're interested in two standard deviations from the mean. So two standard deviations is going to be 14 because again, sigma was seven. One standard deviation is seven. Two times seven is 14. So two standard deviations would be 14. So if we go 14 above and below the mean, okay, so 148 plus or minus 14, that's gonna put us at 162 and 134. So 134 and 162 are exactly two standard deviations away from the mean. Right. Any number that's between them is going to be within two standard deviations of the mean or less than two standard deviations away from the mean. Okay. Now, Chebyshev's inequality says if you want k to be 2, you plug in 2, right, where k goes. So in the denominator there, we square that, divide it into the 1, subtract, and we end up with 3 fourths, or 0.75 is the decimal equivalent. So the probability that a random value is between 134 and 162 is going to be at least 0.75 for any population that has a mean of 148 and a standard deviation of 7. All right, so the standard deviation kind of limits how much a number can stray in either direction from the mean. Okay? Now, it says at least 0.75. We could also say at least 3 fourths. That obviously means the same thing. So the flip side of this is that, again, the probability of being outside that range, so below 134 or above 162, is going to be at most what we got for the 1 over k squared. So that's the 1 fourth or 0.25. So in terms of percentages instead of probabilities, we take the probability of something happening, multiply it by 100, we get the percentage of times that that thing would happen. So we're saying at least 75% of all values in any population are going to be within two standard deviations of the mean. And at most 25% are going to be more than two standard deviations away from the mean. So already we know the probability that a number is say 2.5 standard deviations off center is going to be less than 0.25 because at most, in any scenario, the probability of being more than two standard deviations off center would be 0.25. All right, so second example, we're going to use the same mean and standard deviation. Okay, so if 148 is still in the middle, only now we're going to talk about being five standard deviations away from the mean. So we're widening our distance. Okay, so we're going to have five sigmas, sigma is seven, so that's five times seven, 35. Okay, so if we're going 35 in each direction from the mean of 148, that's going to be 148, give or take, plus or minus the 35. So that's going to give us limits of 113 and 183, respectively. And okay, so those two numbers are exactly five standard deviations off center. So with this wider interval, the probability that a random number would end up in here has to be higher than it was in the example we did first with k equal 2. And so when we plug in 5, we get 1 minus 1 over 5 squared, which turns into 1 minus 1 over 25. And when we do that subtraction, we get 24 25ths, or 0.96. 
Okay, so by allowing ourselves now to talk about being five standard deviations away, we've gone up from 0.75 for two standard deviations to 0.96 for five standard deviations. So in, in terms of percentages, that means in every population, at least 96% of the values are within five standard deviations of the mean. So almost all values, always under all circumstances, are less than five standard deviations off center. And on the flip side of that, that means at most, 4% of the values are going to be more than five standard deviations away from the mean. Okay. Now, this is what Chebyshev tells us. It tells us the probability or the likelihood of a value being so many standard deviations off center. There's nothing more to this. And, um, but what we want you to see from this is that even with k equal to five here, right? It is hard for a number to be more than five standard deviations off center. If you were to plug 10 in, you'd end up with 0.99. So it is really unlikely to be 10 standard deviations off center. Okay. Most of the values in any population are going to be within a few standard deviations of the mean. 